discussion today is so many of the young people in our ummah are so distant from their parents simply because they assume there's a generational gap. They assume? They assume what? That there is a generational gap. What that means is, I am different than my dad. I am playing video games for six hours a day. My dad never knew. He never had electricity when he was a child. He doesn't know what video games are. Yeah, this happens. I've heard this with my own ears. The child sits on the phone for four or five hours of the day when the mother says, Hey, my daughter, why are you wasting your life away on the phone for six, seven hours a day? The daughter says, Oh, mom, you're old fashioned. In your day, you did not even have a wired telephone. In your day, you did not even have a wired telephone. Who are you? You, you? you don't even know what you're talking about. So, and then this, what happens? As we grow older and older, you start to live with these fundamental things, items that are making us, drawing us further and further away from each other, parents and children, to the extent now the child has grown up, and now what happens, and I've heard this many, many, many times from parents, where children are using their homes as hotels. Children are using their homes as hotels. What's a hotel for? You go there, you, you defecate, you have a bowel movement, you use the bathroom, you take a shower, you eat something, you go to sleep. You wake up in the morning, you shower again, you eat something, you use the toilet and you leave. And as soon as you return back, the cycle starts all over again. It's a hotel. It's a hotel. And subhanAllah, some, for some of us it's not even a hotel, it's a motel. For some of us, it's not even a hotel, it's a motel. This has become the condition of our ummah. And I've had parents over and over tell me, how come my son, we knock on his door? Ooh, privacy. Privacy. Look how big of a hypocrisy this is. The Quran says, the children, before they enter the mother's and father's room, they need to knock. The Quran says, the children need to knock before they enter the mother and father's room. The children have so much authority in the house, they slam the mother and father's door open and walk in like they own the place. And the father and the mother are like wimps, they knock on the door. Honey, my love, are you there? Can I come in? The mother and father, it's supposed to be the opposite. It was supposed to be the opposite. The children were supposed to ask permission to go into the mother's and father's room. But no, now what's happening? The children have all of the authority because they know what they are doing. And subhanAllah, I see, I see, I'm telling you, I hear this. I hear this over and over again from parents. Anyhow, now to us here, us sitting here. Allah Rabbul Azahi, on behalf of parents, it's forbidden for a person to remind a favor. It's forbidden for a person to remind a favor. I can't tell you, hey, I shared my candy with you yesterday, you must share yours with me today. It's haram. You're reminding of a favor. You're using a favor to extract a favor. You cannot say that. Parents cannot even say, hey, my child, I raised you and I fed you for this many years. Now you should pay the bills. It's reminding of a favor. When we do favors, we do them for the sake of Allah. When we do favors, we do them for the sake of Allah. We raise our children for whom? For the sake of Allah. Now, when we're raising these children, all of the hardships that we face, Allah Rabbul Izzah on behalf of the parents in the Quran reminded of that favor. Allah has the authority. Allah is the authority. You can't remind me of a favor. You can't say, I cannot tell you next week, hey, I gave you pizza last week, so you have to attend next week's lesson. It's absolutely haram. I cannot tell you, hey, I gave you pizza today, so now next week you have to attend the lesson. I'm reminding you of a favor, it's forbidden. But when it comes to parents, the favor is so immense, it's so big and gigantic, Allah reminds of that favor on behalf of the parents in the Qur'an, not once, not twice, multiple times. Allah reminds, 
and he says that your parents raised you when you were small, so you should be, and though there's many ayat, you should be kind to them, you should not raise your voice to them, and let alone be kind and raise your voice. The Quran, can, one of the most amazing things I find baffling, the Quran talks about not showing an expression of dis, dislike to your parents. An expression! The Quran talks about not showing an expression of dislike towards your parents, let alone saying something. You have children nowadays, what they do, they say all, under all kind of garbage from their mouth. They're used to talking to their friends. And they use that, they don't know how to differentiate, okay, this is this my dad is, is a different status than my friend here in school, I have to talk differently. It's hard, they have a hard time differentiating, so they just spew all the garbage from their mouth, even at their parents. Anyway, so the Quran talks about even an emotion of dislike, even the emotion of dislike a person should not do towards their parents. And I'm not talking about in a situation of oppression, or in a situation where you're being wronged by your parents. I'm gonna get there. I will get there, inshallah. I'm talking about in general. Maybe your dad said, hey, or your mother said, my daughter, that's enough sitting on the phone. You sat on the phone already for three hours. Your mother says, can you please come help me with something? And you suck your teeth. What do you do? You say, what do you say? You don't even say nothing. You go, you suck your teeth. This is, in our context of society today, this is a what? Expression of dislike. Allahu Akbar, Allah said, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفٍ وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْفٍ Don't even utter an emotion of, dis of, of dislike towards your parents, let alone the garbage that we spew from our mouths. Why do we think? Why? Why such a high status? Why? In the Khilafah of Umar ibn al-Khattab in the, in the Caliphate, in the 10 years of Umar ibn al-Khattab, there is a story mentioned of a man who came to Umar and he said, Oh Umar, I take my mother and she has become extremely ill. My back is her transport. What did he say? My back? I carry my mother on my back. I don't think anybody here will ever be able to have the honor of carrying their mother on their back, let alone literally, not even figuratively. Anyhow, so the Sahabi says, I carry my mother on my back. I even take her to use the bathroom on my back. Have I fulfilled her right? What right was he talking about? He was talking about the rights, the, the, the responsibility Allah put on the mothers. Let's start with it. Maybe you children don't know. Your mothers, they carry you in their bellies for nine months. How many? Nine months. They're constantly nauseating. Imagine 24 hours a day feeling like puking. Imagine. They have a medicine for it. It's so, it gets so bad. They have, I have young children too, so I know. They have a medicine for it here called Diclectin. They give you this pill and it suppresses your nausea for the women. And the doctors prescribe this pill because your mother for nine months is nauseating or possibly nauseating. She's feeling like throwing up. Anytime smell some food, anytime eat something, she feels like puking. Then the burden of carrying extra weight on her body, 10 kilos, 5 kilos, for long periods of time, and then giving birth to the child. Giving, she gives birth to you, and then after that, the child is not like any other species in this world where they're born, and they just get up and start walking, start moving, going about their life. This child is entirely dependent on their mother for everything. The mother has to now feed them, suckle the baby, wash it, clean it, give it a shower, do everything for this child. This child is helpless. Matter of fact, to move this child around, the mother has to carry this child with her hands. And then 
this child, you think, you think you have greatness. And particularly the youth, you know. I find it strange, the youth of our ummah, when they start to grow some hair on their chest, their biceps get a little bit of a bulge, their chest starts to pop, they think, oh yeah, you know, I'm the real deal now. Who is my dad? Who is my mom? You know, I, I'm a man now. That's what they say. I'm a man now. I'm growing up. Allahu Akbar, we need to remember who we are talking to. Anyhow, so the Sahabi says, Have I fulfilled her right? Do you not know? You talking, all of us talking, obviously by extension. It's, it's the mercy of Allah, it's the permission of Allah that we talk. Every single thing that you do, from your walking, from your talking, from every functional ability that you have, it's by extension of the mercy of your mother and your father. Obviously Allah is the authority that's allowing everything to happen. But who did it come to? Who taught you how to talk? Your mother, your father. Who taught you how to walk? Your mother and your father. Now you're using that same walk and talk against the same person who taught you to walk and talk. You're using your same tongue that you're just spilling garbage from your mouth at your mother and father. That same mother and father that taught you how to use that tongue. That developed that tongue into a, a sound and words for you. Now you're using that tongue to spill garbage. Those same, those same muscles that your mother and father nourished by extension. Obviously Allah does. By extension, your parents work day and night, shed blood, sweat and tears so that you can grow stronger in your life. Now you use those same muscles to work against your father and your mother. How shameful, how shameful of an act. Anyway, so when I said that Sahabi asked, Hal a day to Have I fulfilled the right of my mother? I'm using my back as a form of transportation. I put her on my back and I take her everywhere she needs to go to the extent I take her to the toilet also on my back. Umar radiallahu anh responded by saying, Not love, Not even for one scream at the time of childbirth. Not even your whole life's of service. Your whole life's of service for your parents, even if your back has become the transportation for them in their old age, doesn't matter what you do, it's inequivalent to the amount of service the parents have done to you. And then Umar radiallahu anh, he explains why. He explains why. He says because, he highlights the wisdom. Why isn't it an equivalent? He said because your mother offered you the same service. Your mother offered you the same service. She changed your diapers when you did, were not potty trained. She washed your behind with her right hand when you were on the toilet. After you relieved yourself, she washed you or your mother washed you. And subhanAllah, hoping that what? One day you would become independent and stronger. And you are serving your mother waiting. When is she going to die? You, you people understand the difference? Hello? You people understood the difference? You understood the difference? The difference is that when our mothers did the service for us, they did it in hopes that we would become independent and stronger. We are doing the service for our mothers, seeing it as a burden waiting. When is this, we are going to be relieved from this burden? When are they going to die? This is the weakness of our Iman. This is the weakness, this is our condition. This is who we are. So, boys and girls, Allah reminded on behalf of the parents, this favor in the Quran, your parents have raised you. You need to be kind to them. You need to not utter even an expression of dislike towards them that would hurt them. And subhanAllah, in our many more of these stories that I hear in our time, this, this gap that we assume, parents are so, there's such a big gap with the parents and children that the children are using their homes like hotels and parents have no idea, how do I come out of this dilemma? 
how do I come out of this dilemma? One of the biggest problems we are facing is you have lost your authority as parents. You have lost, you have lost your authority as parents. And you're raising all of these children too. Imagine, you're raising all of, your parents raised you like that. And when I say authority, I'm gonna explain. You told your child, you told your child to offer salah. And this child says, no, I don't wanna do it. I'm too tired, I'm gonna sleep in. And you do absolutely nothing. To the extent, to the, I'm just giving an example of salah. To the extent, let's say you told your child, hey, you've played video games for two hours, now it's time you shut it up. You played video games for how long? For two hours. And now daddy is saying, my son or my daughter, it's time you shut it up. And you said it and the child just ignores you and they kept on watching. You know what would have happened when we were children if we did that thing? That whole TV would have been smashed on the wall. There would be no TV for the next day. If the father said, if the mother said, you don't touch your phone. If the father said, you do not touch, you don't want to watch TV. And we did it. We broke that order. That TV would have been in pieces. Doesn't matter how much it had cost it. Ask your parents. But what happened to us today, we start to stay silent, we don't care. Oh, I said it once, twice, they're not listening. The heck with them, go ahead, waste away your life. What's the problem with that? Once again, we need to be very careful. It's actually hypocritical, and I'll highlight how. It's actually a double standard. It's actually a double standard, and I'll highlight why. When it comes to the order of the law, when it comes to, sorry, when it comes to the dunya, you'll enforce everything. You wake up your child who is three years of age. How old? Three. You know, 10 years ago, there was no, uh, <laughs> there was no JK. Because it's actually a JK, it's a joke. There was no, there was no JK. Junior kindergarten, what the heck is that? What's junior kindergarten? There was no such thing. Hey, listen. I'm talking 10, let's go, not 10 years, 15 years ago. When we were kids, 20, 25 years ago, there was no junior kindergarten. There was no such thing. Because what are you going to teach a three-year-old child? There was no such thing. There was a senior kindergarten. There was only one kindergarten. It was called kindergarten. Not senior, not junior. It was called what? Kindergarten. It was only half a day. The children would come for three hours in the day and go back home. That's how kindergarten was in this country. So how old is a child at that age? Four years of age. So a four-year-old child, parents are picking that four-year-old child up that's meant to be sleeping at home. That's meant to be growing with their parents at home. They're picking that innocent child up and dumping it with some kafir inside of a school. And how, how old? Ask the mother, any mother in this room, any, any parent, is that justice? By Allah, your own nafs will tell you, your own ruh will tell you how big of a haram and injustice it is to wait to take a four-year-old child, drag them out of bed and dump them in a school in front of a guy. It's, it's oppressing this child. Allah will ask us on the Day of Judgment just because some non-Muslim person told me that this is the way, so that's the way. Anyhow, but science is developing, you know? So then over, after a couple of years, that kindergarten became full day kindergarten. Full day with a nap. What did it become? It was part, it's part of the curriculum. This is not a joke, boys. It became full day kindergarten. So the kids would come to school for three hours, have a nap for half an hour in school, and then the rest of the three hours, and then they would go home. This became kindergarten. Oh, and then the science progressed. And then they said, you know what, hey, we need to have a junior kindergarten, the joke. The JK, junior kindergarten. So they implemented this, and they said, you know what, bring the three-year-olds to school too. Bring me, bring the three-year-olds to school too, no problem. And then they didn't even make a half day, they said, make it the whole day, bring the, bring the small three-year-old innocent children, bring them to school to sit in a classroom, industrialize these children. And look, we're oppressing these children. 
This is serious oppression of these children. Anyhow, Allah can question us. Wallahu a'ala. Anyhow, now these children that are here, what are they learning? I'm not, Islamic school is a different thing. Islamic school is a different thing. Back to the point. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked here. Why I was making mention of this. So how come you are enforcing something that's only to your benefit? Why is a parent oppressing their three-year-old child by dragging them out of bed, sticking some cereal in their mouth, and dumping them at school? Why? Why are they forcing the child to do that? There is no child in the world that would want to do that. But parents are forcing their children. Why? Day after day, because it's free babysitting for you. Now you can go to work comfortably. Because it's... It's free babysitting. Now you can go to work comfortably. Your child has been babysit by the school or by the daycare or whatever. So you're forcing your child somewhere. But when it comes to your salah, you say, Oh, I'm not going to force my child to offer salah. Leave him on his own. When it comes to forcing your child to, to, for education, sending them to school, they're learning absolutely zip nothing. They could be learning characteristics and akhlaq and adab and du'as and kalimat and Qur'an from their mother and father or their siblings at home. We're sending them to school to sit with people that don't even know the name of Allah. Double standard. We're forcing it one side. On the other side, when it comes to the deen of Allah, we say, no, I don't have any authority. When it comes to your child sitting in front of the television for aid, I hear some kids, Allah Akbar, may Allah protect us. Some kids sitting in front of the screens for six, seven hours a day playing video games. By Allah, even two hours. Some kid, think about it, you people know what I'm talking about. Even two hours a day sitting in front of a screen. This addiction, this is severe addiction, is damaging your health, your mental health. In the long run, look at it, read the studies. What's happened to us as parents, we unable, first of us as children, we unable to understand what productivity you're getting out of that time. Allah will ask us the ayah I started with. Allah can ask you about everything. Allah can ask you about anything. The hadith says Allah will ask you about your time and where you used it. The hadith says, Allah will ask you about your time and where you used it. What am I going to say if I spend six hours of my day in front of a screen playing a video game? Allah asked me, what did you do with this time? What was your gain in this time? It was 100% net loss. I gained absolutely nothing. Look, Allahu Akbar, look at this point. You gained absolutely what? Zero from this. You got richer? If you played a video game for six hours, you got wealthy? You get any smarter? You got any stronger? They tried to fool you by creating this Wii, the Wii game. You, we look like a dummy sitting inside of a room, punching the air like this. They made this Wii game to try to make it interactive. Oh no, no, this is the healthy video game now. You're part of it. And then subhanAllah, when we were children, we were taught, we were taught, hey, you know what, stay far from these screens and TVs. It'll mess up your eyes and mental health. And today what happened, they put the TV right on the eyes. They put the TV right on the eyes. No more eyes needed, just put a TV, put a chip in your head and let it go. What happened to the world? What happened to us? So Allah can ask you, Allah can ask you, hey, you had the time. What did you make of yourself? You make, and it's quite sad to see. I see a lot of people, subhanAllah, and inshallah, my time is coming to a close. Ladies, I see a lot of people, alhamdulillah, with the ladies, the, the literacy level is high in our ummah. With the women, mashallah, the, the level of literacy is high in our ummah. But with the boys, they like to be cool, you know? They like to be cool, and they assume, no, oh, hey, I want to be like a gangster style, I want to be like 50 cent. And I see some of the guys, you know, some of the, and you'd be shocked. You have children like you, who have, who Allah awarded many resources. 99% of the world does not have the resources that you have. You have access to wealth, you have access to education, you have access to health, you have access to safety and security. And what do you make of yourself? Absolutely zero. You grow up and you end up working in a Walmart. 
It sounds funny, but it's real. I'm telling you, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with working in the Walmart. What I'm saying is Allah gave you the resources. You are at fault by not utilizing these resources and making something of yourself. What's going to happen if you just waste your time? And you know, when you watch these movies or these vlogs, or you waste time on your video games and your television, who is getting, who is growing? Where's the growth? You know? Where's the growth, guys? Huh? Where's the growth? Somebody's good. Huh? Exactly. The people that develop that content, they're growing. What have you, what have you created? Absolutely zero, zip, nothing. You're sitting there making someone out wealthy. Assuming one day, you know, uh, maybe you'll hit the lottery or something, but I had the that. So, in a nutshell, guys, I'm gonna close here, inshallah, and then I'll have questions for a few minutes. In a nutshell, the first thing for parents, it's okay to be strict. It's okay to be strict. Particularly when it comes to the deen of Allah. You're strict when it comes to the dunya. When your kid gets an a, something less than an A and B, you start to scream at them. Your child got an A, B, or a C, or a D, you scream at them. And that same child did not read Quran for months and months and you have nothing to say about it. Maybe you're not reading it yourself. So as parents, we need to remove that double standard and lead by example number one. Be that visible change for your children. Be that visible change for your children. You cannot tell your child, hey, you know, don't sit on the phone for four or five hours and you're sitting on the phone yourself. Shut it off, put it away. So as parents, number one, remove that double standard and be, be there for your children. Give them time. Lead them with example. How to memorize the Quran. Teach them how to offer salah. Teach them how to give your zakat. Teach them. Be there for them. Don't just waste your life away. Who was Rasulullah? Who was the Prophet Wasallam? Teach those children. We not. We think, oh no, it'll happen by itself. And you know, we people, these assumptions that we have, where are they coming from as parents? They're coming from a generation where predominantly there was Muslims in the, in the environment. Here it's not the case. There is lots of Muslims that have left the fault of Islam. We don't want to have nothing to do with Islam as a faith. Simply because they didn't understand it right. Simply because it was not taught to them right. Simply because there was not a role model that, to show them in a the family what the true Islam is. How easy it is. And number two for the kids, be respectful and mindful of your parents. Be kind to them. And this is growth. This is what? This is net growth. And how? You know the children today, how many skills you have? How old? What's the, what's the oldest person? Uh, yeah, let's say, who's 13 here? Put your hands up. 13. You know, when I was 13, pay attention guys. When I was 13, what was I doing? Playing video games we never had. We never had. What was I doing when I was 13 years of age? Every crazy, deadly thing in the world. If there was a via, a car, there was somebody that had a car, something broke, I would climb under the car to fix the car, I had no idea what I was doing. If something, if the lights had broken, I would climb in there and fix that light. And you know, oh, it's dangerous. Too bad, those video games are also dangerous. I remember at a time, I was working on some electricity as a child. As a child, I was working on, I was playing with electricity, and I burned my whole, the skin off my entire arm, and did not even go to the hospital. The whole arm, I had no skin on there, and I did not even go to the hospital. It was no big deal, yeah, it's okay. What happened to us today? What, where is your growth? And where was my growth? At the age of 15. Guys, at the age of 15, I was just a child. I was able to do complex, very, very detailed complex work that electrical engineers can't even do. 
because I had the guts. I was learning from people in the community how to do these things. If there was one uncle who was an electrician, I would hang around with him. He would teach me. If there was another brother in the, in the community who was a mechanic, I would stay with him. He would teach me how he fixed his vehicles. Today, everybody is just brain dead. The only thing they're good at is their video games. How is that development in any way? Your children don't even know how to cook. You, your children don't even know how to fry an egg. You don't even have the confidence to cook. I remember when we were children, we did not have access to a stove. We did not have access to a stove. You know how we cooked? We took an iron. We cooked on an iron. By Allah, we cooked on an iron. We never had a stove. Maybe it's not healthy, I don't know. But we cooked on an iron. Nowadays, the mothers or the fathers sit at home cooking, and the children just wait, you know, in the buffet line. Once it's ready, call us. And some parents are so pathetic, they knock on the child's door. My son, I left the food outside the door for you. It's nice and hot, please eat it. Is your son a dog or something? Really, it's sad. It's sad by all of these things. I, I, you know why I share these things? I hear these things from our communities. So, before I came, guys, before I came here, I cooked. I cooked for my family. I never ate, because I was going to eat with you guys. But Allah is my witness. I cooked. Guess what I cooked? Anybody? Eggs? No, not eggs. No, not chicken. Pasta. 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 You're making fun of me, chicken. Pasta. No, I made kaddu gosh. What that means, the Prophet I said, I'm like a dubba. There was a dubba, in, uh, it's called in Arabic, in Urdu we call it kaddu. It's a long squash. In English it's called long squash, the green one. Very hard to cook. Because if you overcook it, it becomes like water. If you undercook it, it's hard. So it's got to be perfect. So I cooked the meat with a dubba, with the, 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 the long squash, the green one inside of there before I came. I never even tasted it, but I cooked it and left it for my wife and kids. Now you tell me, when did I learn how to cook? Where? When did I learn how to cook? I did. I did in my life, I cooked. Why? Because whatever the situation was, your children nowadays, they're scared to turn the, the, the stove on. Maybe I might get burnt. Maybe I might get burnt. The parents tell the child, Oh my son, don't, don't, don't go close to the stove. We don't want you to burn yourself. You just go sit on the sofa. We'll cook for you and we'll bring you the food. How is this growth for your children? Let your children do the work. Add them to the equation. Bring them into the work you're doing. If the father is working on his car, bring him in. By Allah, anything I do inside of my house, my children are right there. They make it more work for me. When I tell them to do something, hold this or grab that tool or help me fix this, they make more work for me. They're not helping me in any way. But they are there, why? To learn from their father how he is doing this. To learn from their mother how, the, how she is doing that. You're not involving them. Oh no, 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 this is our, this is my celebrity child, you know, put him on a pedestal. So as parents, we need to wake up. Back to the children, sorry, I'm just gonna, one more minute inshallah and I'll finish. The children, guys, be kind. At, do things that are growth oriented for you. Ask yourself, you have a mind, you have a brain. Allah gave you aql and intellect. Allah gave you a conscious. Ask yourself, hey, if I'm sitting on this phone for four hours, was there any growth? If I'm sitting playing video games for six hours, was there any growth? Or rather, should I be standing with my mother, helping her getting reward, learning from her experiences, learning from her etiquette, her akhlaq and adab, learning from my father, or should I just sit there and take it, take this bad influence from this technology, from some, some garbage vlogger that's on top of this, uh, this phone or something that I'm watching.